you may know him from such animated series as ray rendering and ray shading. But he has done, let me show you, it was improv, improv comedy in front of Tony Hill, the Emmy Award winning actor from Veep and Arrested Development. So I'm sure that wasn't stressful at all. So everyone, please welcome Tyler. Hi everyone, my name is Tyler Morgan Wall. I'm a research staff member at the Institute for Defense Analyses in Alexandria, Virginia, and I'm the developer of Ray Shader, Ray Render, and the Rayverse, a collection of palette packages that enables you to create beautiful 3D data visualizations all in R. And today I'm going to be talking about how, or showing you how you can build a 3D digital replica of a city completely in R in only a few lines of code. Um, so I'm also going to show you why you should use R to make stun stunning 3D data visualizations and how you can interactively fly through these scenes uh, without leaving your R session. And finally, I'm going to show you how you can use this ability to help tell data-driven stories within these cities. So first, uh, let me start off with an example of a beautiful, hyper-realistic 3D city, city rendered entirely on a computer. <laughs> So this, of course, is uh, SimCity 2000, uh, released by Maxis in 1993. This overhead isometric city building game um, lets you design and build your own metropolis. Uh, and as a kid, I loved playing this game, although not in the intended way of managing tax rates and building sewer and electrical grids. Um, being a child, I just used cheat codes uh, to get unlimited funds and do what I actually found fun, which is uh, building and designing cool looking cities. Um, and what, in my opinion, made a city cool looking? Well, it was creating towns and cities that interacted with the natural terrain in fun and interesting ways. Uh, building a city bisected by multiple rivers or on top of a plateau or within a mountain range or a volcano caldera. And that's because humanity and the environment are intrinsically linked. And SimCity provided KidMe a very easy canvas to play with those concepts. And in general, representing that intersection of humanity and the environment is one of the goals of cartography. Maps are the language of how dirt, water, and nature relate to flesh and blood. Um, and this was one of the goals I wanted to bring to R when I started developing Ray Shader. But I had a problem. Many of Ray Shader's 3D maps looked like the empty, pre-generated SimCity terrain, devoid of life and civilization. And since one of my goals with Ray Shader was to help scientists and journalists tell stories about how our changing environment affects the people within it, I realized I had to find a way to add humanity to Ray Shader's maps. And the utility of this goal was made especially clear to me in June 2020, when Andrew Batran of the Washington Post asked me if Ray Shader could be used to help visualize and tell a story about how the Trump administration then used helicopters against protesters during the Black Lives Matter protests here in D.C. This was intrinsically a 3D data-driven story. They had GPS and altitude data and wanted to visualize the path of the helicopter as it wove through the buildings of downtown DC. But at the time, Ray Shader only supported uh, 3D terrain and basic data like points and lines. Not enough to build a publication-worthy visualization of the downtown area, so they had to use other tools. But as someone who believes you should be able to use uh, make any data visualization in R, I knew this was something that I had to fix. So I did. Um, and here's what you'll learn in this talk, um, uh, how to build a city from raw data in R in just a few lines of code. But I'll also show you how you can integrate other data into that 3D city. And I'll show you how to create animations and explore your data interactively. But before we dive into 3D cities, I'll introduce the 3D ecosystem provided by the Rayverse and show how you don't need any three, uh, fancy 3D modeling skills in order to create a stunning 3D data viz. And, and since the most common feedback I get when I give a talk on 3D data visualization is, wow, I wish I could make something like that, but I don't work with 3D data. Um, I'm also going to make sure to show you some examples of 3D data visualizations made from a variety of different data sets, all in R, that will hopefully inspire you to try something on your own. Now, there are a few packages out there for 3D data visualization, but I'm going to be talking about the Rayverse, the set of packages I developed that focuses on making high quality 3D renders with realistic lighting. The main package I'll be using in this process is Ray Shader, a package that enables you to transform your data into 3D models. 
The other Rayverse package I'll be using is Ray Render that allows you to make beautiful path traced 3D data visualizations like it's from Blender, but entirely in R. And all the spatial uh, data manipulation I'll show in this talk has done, uh, been done with the simple features package, uh, which allows you to import and parse almost any kind of data in R. And finally, uh, or spatial data in R. And finally, I'll be using the elevator package to programmatically fetch elevation data for our 3D maps. So you need to walk before you can run. Uh, so before we can build an entire 3D city, let's cover the basics. What exactly goes into a 3D data visualization? What are the different things you need to keep in mind when putting together a 3D data viz? First, what kind of data can be used for 3D plots? So all you need for a 3D data viz are data with at least three numeric components. Here we have European flight path data from the crowdsourced open sky network. And flat path, uh, flight path data has altitude, uh, longitude, and latitude data, which intuitively map here to X, Y, and Z, and are plotted as uh, 3D paths here. So this is a fairly straightforward and intuitive use of 3D, but you can also you choose to use 3D aesthetics with 2D data. Much like you might choose a line chart over a bar chart purely for aesthetic reasons, you might choose a 3D chart over its 2D counterpart because you can make it more interesting and visually appealing. This is a map of the submarine fiber optic cable network uh, wrap, and there's no actual 3D data present, just latitude and longitude data. The cables rise out of the earth where they start and fall back in where they end. You could easily plot this as 2D paths on a simple world map, but I think the floating cables, subtle shadows, and rotating globe really elevate what is otherwise a fairly simple data set into something more tangible and relatable on a human scale, like the earth is being wrapped in yarn. So many 2D plots have direct 3D equivalents, but just turning points and lines into spheres and cylinders can lead to mixed results. Data floating in the void can, is hard, can be hard to interpret if you're just presented with a static image as objects in the foreground can block those in the background, like we see here in the static 3D rendering of a morphine molecule generated with the ray molecule package. But you can solve this problem by animating the 3D data. The movement disambiguates the foreground from the background so that the reader can fully interpret the 3D model. Besides points and lines, the other main type of 3D data visualization is the 3D mesh, a continuous grid of data values. This is where the ray shader package comes in. It, com it takes 2D grids of raster data and, uh, and creates 3D models by transforming that flat matrix data into 3D. Uh, this visualization of the underwater volcano in Tonga that erupted earlier this year was generated from a simple 2D matrix of bathymetry data taken from a sonar survey. Check out the code to see how straightforward this is. From our matrix to 3D model in just a few lines. Oh, uh, there it is, in just a few lines. And this is true of almost all the visualizations you'll see in this talk. The rendering code is usually only a dozen or so lines of our code, and most of the work is in cleaning and prepping the data, which it always is. Now, if you're the type of person that obsesses over the tiniest details of your data visualization, great news. 3D data viz brings an entirely new type of detail to obsess about lighting. If you've ever talked with a photographer, you know that the secret to uh, amazing photographs isn't necessarily having the best camera, but rather ensuring you have adequate and well-designed lighting. And the same is true of 3D rendering. If you only have a single light, like we have here in this uh, 3D historical map, the visualization is a bit spooky, like a swinging light bulb in a haunted house. Uh, but if we look at this visualization of the blooming California poppy fields with multiple distant fill lights, we see the atmosphere has changed completely much brighter and less moody. Even easier than all of that is using an HDR image file for environment-based lighting, which we see here in this visualization of Monterey Bay, California. It lights the scene with a real world image, which results in natural realistic lighting, like the object was actually in that environment. And finally, if your data changes over time, you can also, also introduce animation to your data viz. Here, I've used a Microsoft Connect to capture my movements and load them into R using the R mocap package. There is a package for everything. By extracting the individual time slices and rendering each frame separately, I was able to uh, combine all the frames into this animation using the AV package. So now that we know the basics about what goes into a 3D data visualization, let's build our city. So what do we have to do to accomplish this? Well, first we need spatial data. Then we need to load, parse, and filter that data to only what we need for our visualization. Then we need to turn that data into a 3D model and render it in R. So it sounds like a lot, 
But thanks to the great spatial R ecosystem and the easy 3D rendering capabilities of the Ravers, the hardest part by far is just finding all the data you need. So where do we get our data? Uh, well, first thing we need is elevation data to create our base 3D map, and we can get this programmatically using the elevator package. For bodies of water and road data, DC's open data portal to download polygon data. Uh, you can download polygon data, de demarcate the bodies of water and road data to overlay the street network. And most importantly for our case, DC has geo-referenced 3D building data. So not every city will have all of these data sets available uh, or make it easy to find. Um, but thankfully for our case, DC has a nice web portal for accessing all of this information. So this is all the code that it takes to load our packages and our spatial data, our downloaded data. Um, and thankfully, SF, you can see here, makes loading spatial data a breeze. Um, once we load our data with stread, we then want to ensure all of the data is transformed. So we load it here, and then we transform it to the coordinate system that is specified in the building's data. So that's what that CRS means. It says coordinate reference system. And then we transform it to that. So everything's being measured from the same point. Um, and so we do this for each one of the objects, for the roads and for the water bodies. And now that we've loaded it all, um, we just need to download the elevation data for our base map and convert it to an, a matrix to input to Rayshader. So we'll use the latitude and longitude uh, coordinates for, from that intersection from the Washington Post. So that's what these are. I just pulled these from Google Maps. And then uh, we will transform that point to the coordinate reference system uh, that was specified in the buildings object. And then we'll expand it by 10 kilometers just to make sure we're pulling in all of DC, um, which will then crop down to just the buildings, uh, the, the extent of the buildings data set. And then finally, we'll use a Rayshader's raster to matrix function to convert that raster objects to a raster object to a basic R matrix. And then we're done importing all of our data. So to turn this into a 3D map, uh, we'll just run this short Rayshader script. Uh, so this code creates our 3D terrain model by building up layers. So starting with the basic elevation to color, uh, to color mapping and height shade. Uh, followed by some shadows to get some nice uh, shading on, on, on the actual uh, elevation data itself, um, uh, followed by our overlays for the water and roads, and then we pass these all to Plot3D and get this. So this is a 3D map of all of DC. Not only can we see the shape of the, ter the terrain thanks to the underlying elevation data and hill shade, but we can also see the road networks and waterways thanks to the overlays, and now all we need to do is add our buildings with a single call to Ray Shader's render multi polygon Z function, which is the file format that it comes in. Wait a minute or two to generate the model because there's a lot of buildings in DC. And now you have your full 3D digital recreation of every hill, street, and building in DC generated directly from spatial data in only a few lines of code. So this scene has over 38 million vertices rendered in real time in your R session. Um, and this map is pretty neat. I mean, we can see a lot of detail here, but while buildings and terrain are cool, um, it seems a little barren. And that's because we're missing really one important element of our environment, trees. I, and I'm happy to tell you that not only does Ray Shader now support adding 3D trees to maps, it actually, you can add a lot of them. Um, so this is every single tree in DC, 10 million of them detected from 30 gigabytes of LIDAR data covering all 68 square miles of DC, rendered within our digital replica. Um, you might think this is just a fun rendering showing off the cool feature of Rayshader to handle millions of trees, but you can actually start to see public policy impacts in just a single render. By rendering all the foliage in the city, you can actually see how in Northwest DC, uh, over here, we actually have fairly substantially more uh, tree coverage, canopy coverage, than in Northeast DC. And this has real uh, 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 real impacts when it comes to health and wellness. Uh, lower canopy coverage is associated with high, higher summer temperatures and with combined with the uh, gradual warming effects of climate change actually leads to more uh, heat-related uh, heat health emergencies. So being able to visualize that disparity on a tree-by-tree -tree basis is, I think, really, really powerful. Um, so you might also notice that the 3D rendering so far have been a little flat than what I've been showing of DC. And that's because we've been using the raw ray shader output, which is just faster to, to render. If we want something a little nicer, we can call ray shaders render high quality function. 
and get a beautiful path traced visualization with realistic lighting. So using a high quality visualization techniques like path tracing can really enhance the impact of your data viz and increase engagement and interest from your readers. Plus, it just looks really awesome. Uh, so you can see the National Mall here rendered with buildings and trees, all derived from data. Uh, but in addition to trees and buildings, Rayshader can also now reference uh, arbitrary georeference 3D models, um, which allows you to answer such pressing questions as what if we replace the Washington Monument with a movie accurate version of Sauron's Dark Tower from The Lord of the Rings? So Sauron 2024. Now, I've only showed you rotating views of our map so far, um, and you might ask how difficult it would be to set up some more complex visualizations flying through 3D space, and how would you even do that programmatically? So unlike in 2D, where there's only one way to look at a visualization, in 3D you have an infinite number of camera angles, orientations, and settings to choose from. So it can be intimidating, especially if you've never worked in 3D before. But I've made it a little less daunting by including a fully interactive real-time 3D graphics device built into Ray Render and working out of the box with no dependencies. So if you can use Ray Shader interactively, you can use this 3D Ray Render view. So here I've recorded a video of myself flying through DC, visiting various landmarks, parks, and stadiums throughout the city. You can fly around your scene with just your mouse and keyboard and find the best angle and print out your camera angle uh, info for future use. Or you can interactively save uh, keyframes and generate an animation smoothly flying through your data visualization, like a helicopter flying through a city. That's foreshadowing. So now let's see if we can recreate that Washington Post data visualization in R using Ray Shader and Ray Render. Um, so we already have our 3D city model, but we need to import the helicopter flight path data. So how much code do we need to do that? Um, so we need four lines of code. Um, we load the GeoJSON flight data using the GeoJSON SF package, which includes latitude, longitude, and altitude data for the helicopter flight over its flight. We then, again, transform the data to the coordinate system of the building's data set, uh, like we did with the road and waterway data. And then we extract a data frame of X and Y coordinates using the ST coordinates function. And then plot it in our 3D map using Ray Shader's render path function, which, which we can see plotted over there. And we're all done loading the data. But to fully recreate the Washington Post visualization, um, there's two things we really need to do. First, we need to ed edit out all of this helicopter data just to include the only the region of uh, point of interest. So it goes well beyond and well before the actual time period we're interested in. And we also need to gray out the pretty, the pretty 3D model we have. So we just have so we really emphasize just the flight. So we remove all the great work we did making that look all nice. So after we do all that. Oh, so yeah, this is the code that it takes to extract here. We see here up here, we're extracting the data, um, just a couple lines. And then here, we just you know, specify various shades of gray for everything. And that's how we turn our map and substantially more boring. Um, so this we end up with this recreation done entirely in R. All in all, it took about 50 lines of code to go from raw data to fully formed 3D city. So you can compare it to the original and see we did get about 95% there. All that's left for us to do is maybe add some labels and some arrows and do a little post-processing to bring it up to the full uh, publication-worthy uh, status. But being able to do all of this work in R means that we have a tight link between our data analysis and visualization. Um, so streamlining your workflow and improving reproducibility. And having access to the great 3D rendering ecosystem R has to offer means you can produce these stunning 3D visuals without needing to learn any new languages or software suites. And finally, after completing this visualization, I had an idea. You see, this past summer at our studio conference, I gave a talk on making roller coasters in R, basically putting viewers into the data uh, visualization as a passenger on a 3D thrill ride. So while this overhead view is cool, wouldn't it be even cooler to see the view from the flight of, from the helicopter's perspective itself? So simply by using the helicopter's coordinates as the input to the camera position in Ray Render, I was able to recreate the view from the helicopter just by swapping out that one line of code. So not, not only have we shown a new and interesting perspective on this data, but we've also invented an entirely new type of data visualization, the Star Wars Death Star trench run plot. 
But in all seriousness, the R ecosystem is one of the best out there when it comes to spatial data and 3D data visualization. If you work with data and perform analyses in an urban environment, being able to create a, and visualize your, visualize your results in a high quality 3D digital replica can help aid understanding by your readers by placing your data in a familiar and recognizable environment. And using the R spatial ecosystem means it's easy to integrate multiple disparate sources of data into one combined visualization and do it all in a reproducible way. To me, it feels like a cheat code for mapping. So go forth, build a city, and thank you for listening.